Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, the other day I did a video about the difference between a USB live key and installing Linux directly to a USB drive. And today we are going to take this a step further and we are going to take a brand new USB drive and we are going to install Linux on it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this guy up. This is a SanDisk uh, Ultra Fit. Uh, USB 3.1 32 gigabyte flash drive. So that's what we got. Let's go ahead and just pull this guy out. And uh, there will be a link to this guy in the comments down below. So here we are. Let's see, do we have a... There, there we are. Oh, man. They are really making these things cheap these days, man. I have, uh, I have some older models of these. They actually have a cover to go on them. Man, these things are getting cheap. Everything's getting cheap quality. Anyway, well, well, whatever. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to install Linux on this guy. So what I'm going to go with is we're going to use Peppermint this time. Now, my last build was using Lubuntu. I went with Lubuntu to have the most streamlined system that I could find. I really have not liked Lubuntu. I find that it, not only does it look old, it also feels old. There's no search from the menu, things like that. Now in the modern version of Lubuntu, they have fixed a lot of those things. Uh, but still, I'm not a huge fan of Lubuntu. Peppermint though has come a long way, especially the latest version, Peppermint 10, comes with a nice feature that I want to use. So. What they do is Peppermint uses these ICE applications and inside of these ICE applications, then what you will uh, be able to do is set up one of these for each of the bank accounts that I have and then it creates an isolated user profile, which means that the cookies that are tracked and stored on one banking system cannot be seen by anything else that I do on the computer. Now, this is important because unfortunately, even though the best ultimately uh, security and privacy is to completely disable cookies, you generally cannot do that if you're accessing something like a, a bank account at a typical bank. And so what we're going to do is create a drive that anytime I need to access any of my banking or budgets or any financial data, I also keep a master list of my passwords on these as well because we're gonna take this little drive, we're gonna completely encrypt it with Lux, and then we're going to install Linux on it. So what we need to do is we generally either need two USB drives, one to burn the ISO, boot the system, and then the second one to, uh, the second one to actually install it. Now what we're doing in this case is we're going to be using virtual machine for this instead. Uh, because you can do the same thing with virtual machine. Now, to understand the booting process of a computer, um, we're going to go, and this is from neosmart.net. Um, we're going to be looking at this website here. And what this is, what's going on here is when you turn on a computer, the first thing that happens is you have the BIOS goes on the computer. So the basic input output system. So what's going to happen here is when you turn this on, this does some initialization of some basic hardware. And then this will basically turn on your USB ports, turns on some networking cards, a few other functions. And then this goes in and it finds the master boot record, which calls up an application that's going to boot up a bootloader. The bootloader then calls the operating system. All right. So that's kind of what we're going to be looking at. So what we want to make sure that we do is the most critical step is to make sure that the bootloader is installed on this USB drive. The easiest way to do that, make sure this is the only disk in your system. All right. So I built this computer to easily install applications by having, uh, I basically do it by having a um, IC dock in here. So I can just pull the drives out or just hit the power button and no power goes to the drive. So the computer doesn't see that the drive is actually there. All right, so what we're going to do in this case is we are going to boot up a virtual machine. And inside of virtual machine, we're going to create a, a, uh, a machine to get this turned on. Now, you do need to make sure that you have extensions installed, which I believe is under, I think it's under file and under preferences. And there is this tag down here called extensions. You need to make sure that you have your VirtualBox extension pack 
this is what you need to enable USB 3 support. Okay, so now I can actually pick one of my other machines here, or if I really want to, then I could just create a new machine. Now, if I'm picking another one of these machines, I wanna make sure that I'm not actually going to be using the hard drive. So I'd either have to delete the hard drive controller or delete the disk from it, so it doesn't see that there's actually a hard drive there. We're just gonna go ahead and create a new machine. Um, let's just call this USB install. And we're going to go under type, I'm gonna pick Linux, and since Peppermint is based on Ubuntu, we're just gonna go with our Ubuntu 16.04. We're gonna go ahead and hit met next. This is the memory size. How much memory do you want? This guy here has got a lot of RAM, so I'm just gonna go with six. That's probably overkill. I think you know two or four would probably be sufficient, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. In this case here, we are not going to add a virtual hard disk because I don't want it to try and install my grub menu to the hard drive instead of that. And that's where your first mistake is gonna be, is if you're installing one of these and you already have a hard drive, is it's going to add the, it's going to add the system boot to the grub on the first drive by default. Now some of your Linux installers will have the ability to select where the bootloader goes to. Some of them don't have that and it just automatically drops it at the first disk. That's what we want to avoid. So by making sure we don't have any other disks in the system, that's exactly what we wanna do. So let's go ahead and hit create. Um, so now we're going to hit continue to create the, my new machine. So here's our USB install. I'm gonna go into settings and there's just a few other things that I'm going to wanna tweak about it. Uh, so first under our processor, I'm gonna give this guy, um, let's give it this guy four processing cores. Under our display, I'm gonna max this out. Now, if I were gonna be using this for anything more than a simple install, I'd wanna max this out to 256, which unfortunately you can't do here. You have to go into the terminal and do that. We're going to enable 3D. Um, so here we have a uh, CD drive, but we do not have any hard drives attached. Audio, don't care about. Network is just attached and then serial ports, don't need to worry about that. So now USB, this is where I need to make sure I have USB 3 attached. Now, occasionally having USB 3 enabled will prevent the virtual machine from booting. Um, it's kind of like a kind of a roll of the dice. So if for some reason the machine doesn't boot, that's probably why I'll just shut it down and try it again. All right, so I don't really need to mess with anything else. So let's just go ahead and push OK. It's gonna save those. So now what we are going to do is I'm going to go into my optical drive. I'm going to install, um, basically put Peppermint in. So this is effectively like having a copy of my Peppermint installation and putting it in a CD drive. And now I'm going to boot this guy up and then it's going to boot into our uh, Peppermint installation. Now here we have the ability to try or install. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit try. And while we're doing this, uh, I'm gonna be right back because I need to plug this USB drive in and I forgot to get open up a port. Give me a second. All right, so I plugged this guy in. Oh, look, they gave me a bunch of crap on here. Eh, delete you. All right, so that means that it booted into my, my host operating system, not my guest operating system. To get it into our guest operating system, I'm gonna pull up our panel that's down here and under devices, USB, I'm going to find this guy, which is the SanDisk Ultra Fit. We're gonna set this in here. And now it you heard the noise that fell off of my host system. And it is now attached over here on our guest system. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna go ahead and install Peppermint. Okay, so on our installation here, this is just walking us through kind of the, some of the basics. We're just gonna start by selecting the keyboard, the language layouts, and then here, I wanna go with the minimal installation. Now on Peppermint, it really doesn't make a lot of difference. Um, we will download updates and we are going to install anything third party. In this case, actually we're not going to do that. Nah, we will, just in case I need um, uh, graphic drivers or anything else like that. So I'll hit continue. Now this step here, we want to erase and install, um, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to um, erase the, the system here. Now, very important, we want to encrypt the new one. 
okay? Because this is a little banking system. It's gonna contain a password list. And what we're going to do here is we're going to encrypt this. So if anybody does get their hands on it, they're not going to be able to get this installed. So go ahead and hit install now and it asks us to create a security key. And since this is actually going to be a production, I'm going to hide my screen for you guys for a second. And then we're not overwriting empty disk space because that will take just about forever. Um, and it was simply a uh, blank drive as it was out of the box. So that'd be kind of like doing a, um, um, uh, a C cleaner. So um, here we're going to, it's going to tell us how it's gonna format everything, which is perfectly fine. And now we have to pick our different locations and things like that. So again, we're going to pull this out and uh, just so I can set up my account information. And I am gonna require my password to log in. And once it's done with this screen, then I will go back. All right. So now we are to the phase where we are simply copying files. So that is all it takes to get started. Now, once this is done, we are going to be able to pull this drive out and boot it up onto a system. So what we're gonna do now is we're just going to let this run its course and then we will come back and wrap this up. All right, so while this is installing, I'll go ahead and talk through the process what I'm gonna do with this USB drive when it's ready to go. So first thing is Peppermint has a few things on it that I'm not a huge fan of. Um, namely, if you go down into like your internet, you'll see it have things like Dropbox um, in their office that has these. Now, these are not applications. These are our uh, ICE profiles that will go to these online sources. So if I were to click one of these, it just goes and goes to the website to log into Microsoft to access Excel online. Now, all of these are managed under your ICE applications here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come into here when my drive is done and I'm going to remove every one of these that's not important. I'll go ahead and keep the online user guide. Well, I don't need the online user guide. I'll keep the forum in case I need that. But we're going to go ahead and remove all of these guys. All right. So these are just going to remove them from the menu. These are those ICE applications. Since this operating system will do absolutely nothing except um, log into my banks and run my budget and do my books. So the first step I'm going to do is just remove all of those. Second, I'm going to create an ICE application for each of my banks. So if I were to do business with Bank of America, which I do not, um, then what I would want to do is, um, I need to go find what their login page is because like I said, I don't use them. So if I do Bank of America, find them. Okay, so, okay, so right there on Bank of America's homepage is where you log into their bank. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this guy here, come back to my ICE applications, and then use Site Favicon and hit apply. Oh, make sure this is on, in the right spot. So, um, yeah, internet, why not? That sounds good to me. All right. So now if I go under internet, I'll see that I have a Bank of America location. Now, the reason we're going to use these systems here for this banking system is this creates, uh, this ICE application will isolate everything I do on this with every other ICE application and the reg regular web browser. So any cookies that I need to use this online banking system are going to be available just for this website, but they will not carry over and show you anywhere else. So if all these guys are hiding Facebook on their page, and they probably are somewhere, look at that, um, Facebook will not be able to see that I have an account at Bank of America and an account at um, name other bank, PNC. Um, so they won't be able to see those applications. They won't be able to make those direct connections based on the cookies alone. So we're going to create an ICE application for each of the, uh, each of the individual um, uh, banking systems that I want to use. If I remember correctly, I think I can add to desktop as well. So I can go ahead and add them to a desktop or I can add them to a panel as well. 
Uh, so again, let's go right click, add the panel. So I can actually put all my banks down here, it kind of moved over here. So I can go ahead and create a panel with all of the banks that I need to access inside of here. Now the other thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to install a few applications. Uh, which I'm not going to actually do, but just to show you how you do those, just come into here to Peppermint, grab the software manager. So you have a few different places to, to install software. Since I know exactly what I need, I'm just going to do it through Synaptic. Um, yeah, I don't need, need that showing up there. So the few applications I'm going to need is I need GNU Cache, which is something that I use for doing my business books. So I just want to install GNU Cache and anything I need for that. The other thing I need is LibreOffice. And I don't really need the entirety of LibreOffice, but um, I will need, uh, I probably generally just use the spreadsheets, but I'll probably just go ahead and install the whole package anyway, just in case. Uh, so I'll just install LibreOffice. So GNU Cache, LibreOffice. Um, I just need to make sure that we have some type of archive manager. Um, that's preferably not a, yeah, there's an archive manager. And that's pretty much all I need. I don't need a lot more than that on my uh, on my main system. Um, I might do, I might do a uh, password manager as well. So on Linux, I would do something like uh, KeyPass. See if KeyPass is in here. So there's KeyPass2, KeyPass X. Um, I generally would use KeyPass X as the one I generally prefer to use. So you can install those applications, get everything set up. So as soon as this guy is done, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be creating the individual ICE application for each of my uh, each of my banks. I'll probably create a panel at the top uh, that auto hides that uh, I can just go up there and just grab each one of those banks just based on uh, just based on that. And then uh, what I'll do then from there is just make sure I have my GNU cache, transfer my books over, and then transfer over all my budgets and spreadsheets and things. So that is what this system is going to be. All right, so what we've covered here is how to take a USB drive, how to install the operating system. We encrypted the operating system. And then I just kind of walk through briefly what I'm gonna do. Like I said, I do this system for banks. Now the first thing you wanna keep in mind Use a USB 3 drive. You cannot do this with a USB 2 drive. It's going to be too slow. Uh, you need to use a USB 3 drive. Make sure you're doing it on a USB 3 port. Also, make sure that your computer can boot off of a USB drive. On a newer Mac, you have to enable that feature. Uh, some Windows systems, you will also have to enable that feature. You might have to turn off safe boot um, or secure boot. And uh, I always set it to look for USB drives and then hard drives. That way I don't have to mess around with going into the, uh, into the, the boot menu on BIOS. So just make sure that you're, you're doing those basic things. Anytime you're installing a Linux distro to a USB drive, if there's anything sensitive on it at all, make sure that it is completely encrypted. And that's all there is to it. It will behave just like any other Linux distro. You can set it inside of any other computer and it should boot up just fine. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.